This is another episode of the Indie Cafe 2, and today we have a very special guest in my music life, Ivan Julian, who in, I'm going to call this show Back to the Future, going back, uh, one of the first albums I des- worked on the design of, part of was Blank Generation, Richard Hell and the Voidoids, Ivan was one of the Voidoids in that group, very famous. And uh, today, I just want to show you in our 545 book, we have a sleeve from that album, Blank Generation. Ivan's in the photograph, but I'd like to get to um, a little bit, we'll get a little bit of Ivan's past, and then we're going to go into his new album called Swing Your Lanterns. Great album, amazing album. And Ivan's an amazing creative musician, by the way, in my life. I followed him, and he's incredible. So we'll go on a little bit of the past. And I know, Ivan, you always uh, tied in with Jimi Hendrix. Tell us about that. I don't know. The writers like to make that. You know what? I'll tell you something. No one made that similarity until I picked up a Stratocaster. Oh. When, I was, when I was playing other guitars, no one said, oh, Jimi Hendrix. But I have to give Shriek back some credit for that, uh, this band that I toured with for a while, because um, they uh, kind of, inspired me to just make crazy noise and feel your insides while you play, you know? I mean, and that was their yeah. direction for their songs. It's just like, just show them your spleen. And that's, that's what I did. And it, it became, you know, fun. And I know, I, now I know how to reach that place. Yeah, but, um, yeah. you know, but I mean, then again, my pretty much my favorite rock and roll guitar player is Keith Richards. But still, I mean, there's that other place that you can go to and just kind of bang the guitar against your body and have it make massive noise. We know that you're part of, you were part of a group on Sire, Richard Hell and the Void. Tell, tell us how that evolved, that group. Well, I mean, Richard was uh, had a band called the Neon Boys, and then he was in the Heartbreakers with Johnny Thunders. And um, he decided what well, they just parted ways. And uh, he got backing uh, by this uh, producer, Richard Godwer, who also did Blondie and et cetera. So he got backing, so he decided to have his own group. Meanwhile, I had just got, arrived in New York from Europe. And I, uh, I, one of my first auditions I went to was that audition. And they liked the way I played, and I liked the fact that they had songs, or they had three songs, actually. Well, two and a half or something. Yeah. And and I was able to write and they were able to tour and they were going to about to record so that fit everything that I, that I wanted to do at the time. And then uh, you went to a group which I was fortunate enough. You walked into my office and ended up designing an album called Outsets. Tell us about that group. I love that group, the Outsets. Yeah, I'm still uh, pals for some of those guys. Um, uh, after leaving the Voidoids, I wanted to form my own group. And uh, we got signed by this uh, label called Plexus, and we did a 12-inch uh, uh, EP, actually. And um, I, I, I still love the cover that you did with the gun. And, oh, thank and, you. Yeah. The it's gun great... in, in the bowl of ice and, the, yeah, and all yeah. that. And, and, and the photographer, yeah. whose name was Paul B. Good, he was really great as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So um, that, you know, that, that's, how, that's how that record came about. Yeah. We go on to The Lovelies, 1988. Well, you know, that's funny because the – the outsets kind of started to do more syncopated, funky music because we'd play these places and it was kind of at the height of the disco era or something. We play mm-hmm. these places and everybody would back away from the stage. And then when the, when the disco music came on, they'd all go towards the stage. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I thought, let me try to, you know, not mimic it, but like kind of just make some danceable music. And that's what the lovelies was about. It was, um, you know, at the first, um, incarnation was with this guy Danny Hirsch. Danny actually Danny's not with us anymore, but um I played the Stratocaster I play is his guitar. And um we 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 are the idea for the band was we're gonna find some people that can play this music and we're gonna be the worst musicians in the band. And that's always a good philosophy I think you know. And then you hooked up with the Clash, the call up single. Tell us about that one. <laughs> well the call up um I, well, the Vordoids opened for them on uh, uh, one of their early tours, uh, and um, because they'd heard Blank Generation or a demo of it or like you know, a copy of it from the record from the record company from Warner's, and they decided they wanted this to open for them uh, on their tour. So I knew them from then, and also I, I'd met Topper Heaton a, a long time ago. Even when I was in the Foundations, I met Topper Heaton when he was playing with Gary Moore. 
mm -hmm. um, at some place called Manny's Rehearsal Studio. Uh, so um, when they came to New York to do Sandinista, Mick called me up and says, "Ah, oh, come down and say hello. So that's how it all started. I went down and said hello. They started jamming, and then um, I said, Joe, give me your guitar, and then we did that, and Ivy meets Chai Joe. Um, and yeah, that's that's how that whole thing started, you know? Wow. I mean, yeah, 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 it's great. And all those, a lot of those songs, I mean, from that record where it's actually like 20 minute jam sessions. So I was shocked when Mick called me up like six months later or something and says, you gotta go to Columbia and get your check. <laughs> I, said, I said, for what? He goes, well, they made the, that song you played on into a single. So, wow. Yeah. So, you know, thank God for Mick or my check would still be sitting there because nobody, from, right. them, then nobody from them is gonna call me, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great, great. Now, you mentioned a group called Shriekback. I like the members of that group. You played with them, right? I mean, the members Yeah, I, 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 I toured with them for about almost a year. Tell the people out there who was in that group. Shriekback. Well, the, um, there was Barry Andrews from Ecstasy. Uh, there was Ave Allen from the Gang of Four. Mm. Um, also, the two backup singers of the Departure Sisters, they were from the, they sang on I Love a Man with a Uniform. They were kind of from the Gang of Four as well. Um, Martin Barker on drums was amazing, amazing, amazing wow. drummer. Um, and uh, Steve Halliwell was a keyboard player, and then uh, there's a new uh, another New Yorker. Her name was Eve Moon that played the rhythm guitar. I did her album cover on Capitol, Eve Moon. Uh, you toured with Matthew Sweet on your Earth. You were in three gold records. Tell us about that. That's a good thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, actually, I, I started playing with Matthew because um, Quine knew him, and Quine um, had played on the first album, and. Um, Matthew wanted the to tour, and one thing about Bob Quine, on my, you know, my you know, the, the other guitar player of order, it's just he hated touring. He, I mean, mm. he just he, he just you don't even you don't even want to ask him, and if you do ask him, you'll be very sorry. Okay, it's one of these kind of things. Wow. So, so then Bob asked me, like, you want to go out with this guy Matthew Sweet, and I'd kind of heard of him as a singer songwriter, um, but not that much really. I didn't know any of his stuff, and I heard the record, and I liked it. So then I was with him for guy like six years or something like that. Wow, that's incredible. He's a great, he's a great per person, Matthew Sweet. I, uh, he is great. He, he has this amazing ability, too, where he, um, when he does his background vocals, he'll lay down, because he sings all his background vocals himself, he'll mm -hmm. lay down the background vocal, okay? And yeah. then he'll sing harmony with that vocal without mm. hearing, without hearing the first vocal. Wow. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. That's incredible. I know. Uh, and you produced two, the last two Flesh Tone albums, LPs? Yeah, I think it was three. three? Maybe, okay. maybe, it might have been two. I think it was three. Um, yeah, yeah. And that, that I love working with them because they're, you know, they're a seasoned band. They've been around forever. And they play, yeah, re great. they play really well together. And they come in rehearsed and they just kind of know how to get everything onto record just from their playing. So it's like, it's, it's really a producer's dream to work with them, you know, and they, and they have really concrete ideas about what they want to do. It's like, it's, it's, it's amazing. It, it's, uh, do you, do you plan to expand your producing career? Have you, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, well, I also produced a bunch of people, not some you don't might not know of, but I produced Hunks and his punks, which I loved uh, that record as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, now, it's for the next couple of years, I mean, and all that, I, I want to focus on making my own music, you know? Good. Yeah. I mean, you know, because um, that's what I need to do now. I mean, I, I mean I, yeah, as you see, I'm sitting in my studio. I still work with people. Um, yeah. But I, I'm, I'm trying to really focus on that. So we're going to jump into Swing Your Lanterns. I'm gonna, right off, I'm going to ask you, how did that title evolve for the album? Um, the other idea for a friend of mine, Will Croxton, it's kind of a political song, you know, um, uh, kind of sp it's came about actually before the pandemic. It's just um, uh, it, it's about people um, arising to their um, uh, to their awareness, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and it's kind of a visual as well. It's like, I mean, in other words, it, while you're while you're gathering yourself, swing your lanterns low, you know, so you can amass. Yeah. And. Uh... I'm going to get into the songs here. We have some great songs here, but this is interesting. I am not a drone. Um, that's uh, you uh, associated that with Rollerball, the movie. Tell us about that. Rollerball is a very powerful um, <clears throat> uh, prophetic movie, you know, because yeah, yeah. it talks about this apocalyptic kind of uh, age or, or um, uh, and um, it, 
it, there's scenes in it. There's one scene in particular that really helped me, that inspired that song. Um, and um, it's a scene where they're all on the, the, the kind of uh, uh, elitists are on this ridge, this mountain ridge. Mm -hmm. And for entertainment, they're taking flamethrowers and they're shooting trees and catching them on fire. Wow. You know, and it's and it's very very dystopian. The whole feel of the movie is very dystopian. That, and plus, uh, you know, it's like it's memories from the East Village and looking down over the men's shelter in the summertime, and it's just like you know, I mean, it's just saying things are kind of what we're going through now. I mean, and ecologically, things are kind of you know really fired up, and you know, we're all in it together. You know. Yeah. That's what that's yeah. what I meant by that song, I guess. So, uh, uh, can you tell us about some of the songs on the album? Maybe people want to know about or well, uh, find them? well, first of all, um, the single comes out tomorrow. Well, no, 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 it comes out. It will be out. It's the singles out. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. Singles, good, the, sing good. The, sing the singles out. The, and it's the title single. Single swing your lanterns. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's pressed on vinyl as well on Prob the records, and uh, you can find it on you know Spotify and any streaming services. And you can go to probtherecords.com and you can order the vinyl as well as where is wherever you get your vinyl. Um, and then you can listen to the songs. It's like I think of the album as different rooms in a house, mm. you know, where different yeah. things where different things have happened to you yeah. or someone else. Yeah, it's a great album, by the way. I I, re I really appreciate it because I I you know because people I mean my last album was more like the Naked Flame was more sputtering guitar, which I like too, you know. But I yeah. need to get some things out of my system. But this I thought uh, I'm gonna. Um, be a, a little bit more diverse with the songs I have, you know, and, and then the songs that deserve to be on the record. So I, you know, some people, I, well, never mind. I mean, I, I, I have no qualms putting acoustic music on because I love the acoustic guitar. And uh, some of the musicians on the album with you? Oh, there's, well, actually, um, there's four drummers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I tend, when I make records, I tend to gather who's around because it's something yeah. I've learned from actually reading about how albums were made by a lot of the bands I love is that it's n hardly ever the core band that makes the sound. It's always someone who, you know, that they know that they happen to bring in that's playing this or that. And it just really helps develop the song beyond what, you know, the core band and the writers were thinking. So, yeah, there's four drummers. There's Al Maddy, who used to play with uh, Joey Ramone and played in the Dots and played uh, with the Nightcaps. Mm -hmm. I think you know him, yeah. Um, uh, there's uh, who, who else? Uh, blah, 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 blah. There's um, I, I'm trying to think of names. You know, there's Jared Michael Nickerson that plays with uh, Burnt Sugar. Um, uh, there's um, who else? I, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, I, I, there's a, a lot of the names you you would you wouldn't know. I, I don't yeah. think you know. But and I play bass on it. I play piano. I play the Booble Terang. The Booble Terang's my new favorite friend. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and um, yeah, I mean, it's just a, a lot of people. It's thinking of that. There are four drummers. There are three bass players. Um, I do all the guitars except Al plays acoustic guitar on um, uh, "Tell Me Lies." Yeah. Uh, and and and, and although there's, oh, there's Nick Tremulous from Chicago, he's like always a, a great uh, foil of mine. I mean, wow. he uh, you know he's he's an amazing amazing player from Chicago. And also there's his bass player Derek Brand. That's one of the um. That's one of the um. One of the bass players as well. So yeah, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people. So, so you, know? you play a variety of instruments, right? I mean, you you get into this thing of, uh, right? Well, you know, I look, I I look at it like this: if it makes music, I try to make music out of it. You know, I mean, somehow, um, to various degrees of, um, uh, you know, kind of, not success, but what's the word I'm looking for to describe? Um, mm -hmm. you no. Know. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, being done well, I'm going to put it that way. Yeah. I'm kind of lost for words right now. But yeah, I, lo I love new instruments. That's how I came across the bubble terang. I mean, I, the harmonium, anything I hear that has like kind of an earthy, organic sounds. Yeah. Uh, profi proficiency is the word I was looking for. Various degrees of proficiency, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, I put it this way. My favorite piano player is Aretha Franklin. Because oh, I, wow. I, I, I read in a Pete Townshend um, interview once, that she he he was talking about her how he loves the way she plays piano and she plays piano on a lot of her songs. I thought I never knew that. I thought she just sang. 
So I sat down. So I sat down with like you know some of her songs and learned her mm. piano parts. And it's like, yeah, I thought I want to be that kind of a piano player that can wow. actually you know sit down and play with yourself and accompany yourself. Even though I did learn the Moonlight Sonata um, uh, right after 9/11, because I figured, if not now, when? You know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you were playing at Union Pool, right? Recently. Uh, tell yeah. us about that group, that whole uh, thing. Oh, that's uh, that's um. Uh, the Magnificent Six. Okay. And they are, they're, um, um, God, I mean, there's uh, Jim Mastro that plays with Ian Hunter and um, has played with uh, Robert Plant. There's once again, um, uh, Jer Michael Nickerson that plays bass on the album. There's Steve Goulding who um, played drums on Watching the Detectives, which kind of blows me away, you know? Wow. He also he also played with Roxy Music for a while. Um, uh, there's uh, uh, Judy Ann Knock is one of the singers. Debbie Schwartz from the Aquanettas is one of my singers. Um, Al, Al Maddie once again um, is uh, the other guitar player. Um, I think I remembered everybody. Yeah, um, and I call them their Magnificent Six because what I'm trying to do live is bring the record to life on stage you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they and you know there's a lot of instruments happening you know like in pianos and organs and all this other stuff um so yeah they they really do that well did you play a, something, a, a soundtrack for a documentary oh yeah the theme song you mean oh with yeah, um i'm sorry with, yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah with glenn with, yeah, that's a theme song for um a documentary that's coming up called bowery boy okay mm -hmm. and it's um there it's in the making now and uh, they recorded everything at my studio. It's Glenn Matlock, Richard Lloyd. Oh, that's it. And, and no, we're, I'm not done. And Clem, and Clem Burke. Oh, you know, God. That, that was a group, you know. That was a I, group. Wow. Well, with I, me I, behind the board. I'll tell you, I've interviewed all of them. And uh, phenomenal musicians like you are. And what I saw... And I, saw the fact that you were with this group and said, oh my God, this is like a super group, you know? Yeah, I mean, I didn't I didn't play on it, which is, you know, fine. I wasn't, um, uh, because when I'm in the studio, I really like to focus on getting the sound, you know, unless yeah. I, and maybe I'm asked to play on things later, because generally when I'm kind of producing, I just like, okay, let's let's get it right and let's make it sound like something. But yeah, but with the four of us, it was, I was really kind of taken back because, you know, I mean, the last time we were all in the room together was a long time ago, staring at each other across the CBGBs or are watching each other's band play, you know, it's wow. pretty wild. That's great. It's like the circle's complete. That's of. yeah, that's what someone told me. It's like, you know, it's a small world, that's why you have to behave. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah, that's a great line. Um and the band is called the Derelicts, is that right? Yeah, they came up with that on the spot, I think. Or did Bobby yeah. come up with that? Or no, they came up with that. Yeah, they came up with it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great name. Yeah. And I and I hear I hear from the Music Angels you're playing at City Winery on June 10th. Is that correct? That's totally correct. Yeah, we're going to do, do a City Winery gig, and we're looking forward to it. I love playing live. I really do. You know, I love, I love the interaction with the audience. I love sweating, and I love making, you know, horrible sounds to my guitar. So, yeah, but we're doing that uh, June 10th. You yeah, know, I just, I, just saw, I just saw Lucinda Williams there, and I, I love her to death. Oh, she's great. Lucinda I love her Williams. to death. She's unbelievable. And, like, it was just so great. So I've seen her. She, I covered one of her songs, um, Broken Butterflies, on The Naked Flame, and I, I met her and talked to her wow. about it. You know, and, like, so I've seen her before, but, like, every time I see her, she's just such an amazing songwriter and singer. It's like this. She is. She is. You know, it, it's something, like, visceral that you can't create or, or anything or you know, you can just gasp in awe. She did some album with Jesse Malin, which was really amazing. I think uh, uh, last year, I believe. Oh, is that Jesse. why? Is that why she played at his um, anniversary thing? I think so. They're tied yeah. together too. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. and um, Jesse's another great musician. I know. No, he is. Yeah, Vanessa is great. I mean, her name, uh, you know, phenomenal. You know, through the years of music, is if anybody doesn't know, they should know. Uh, so, uh, what are your? Do you have any other? Uh, how can people get this album again? Repeat for any listeners to buy your album. Um, you can go to Pravda.com and they will send you one. They'll send you a vinyl copy because they're they're ready and they're happening. Or you can get a CD from from the same uh, place. You can uh, uh, stream it on Spotify and all those and Apple Music and iTunes if you want to do that. Um, and um, you know and all those other streaming services. 
So yeah, um, but right now, Pravda, and also if you have a vinyl shop near you, it's the distributors are putting it there too. It's it's lovely, you know, because that uh, this record came out briefly in France for a while, but they couldn't get it together to press vinyl, so I took it away from them. Wow. And I it, it, and it took me a while to find someone like like Pravda. They're a really great label. Everyone loves them. That you know has anything to do with them, and um. And and they were they're able to press vinyl and, and make it happen in the states. It's great. Yeah, yeah, that's the next thing I want to ask you. I'm involved with the Making Vinyl Adventure, and I judge the packaging each year. It's uh, Jack White was a keynote speaker with Little Stephen one year. Uh, it's a great event, sold out every year. It's going to be in uh, Minnesota this year. I want to ask about vinyl. Um, uh, how do you feel about vinyl? Uh, obviously, you're a backer of that, right? How do I feel about it? Man, it's like I mean, finally the world has come to its senses. It's like it's like <laughs> you know, it's like I don't know. We've we've been in this like you know, d deep deep ocean hiatus for how many years? I mean, it just sounds so great. It just really, I mean, it, it, you really get a depth of feel and definition out of out of yeah. vinyl, especially when it's when it's pressed well. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it just makes you see. I mean, it, from the spectrum of MP3s to vinyl. I mean, more, you know, it's like it's just night and day and, and mm. more and more people are, are getting back into vinyl and young people as well, which is really great. You know, and, you know, and in England, there was more vinyl sold than CDs last year. Yeah, you're right. And, and it's taken over over the CD market. Uh, and uh, Billboard had a great article on vinyl um, in the Grammy issue about how it's helped many uh, great musicians to get the number one spots on vinyl sales, you know, how it supported them on vinyl yeah. sales. And it is, it's becoming bigger and bigger, more popular, uh, pressing plants all over the world. Um, and, I, and I'm glad to see musicians behind it. I mean, Judith and I, when we started our careers, vinyl was big, you know, and then all of a sudden it phased out, right? And now it's bigger than ever, right? Well, because the CDs were cheaper to manufacture and I mean, et yeah. cetera, you know, I mean, but now, I mean, people are getting, they're into the quality of what they're buying and also the, the artwork for Christ's sakes. I mean, you can look at it. I mean, that's part of buying an album. It's like yeah. being able to hold um, in this tactile um, thing and look and read and, and, and see what the, artist met by you know or or is trying to insinuate with the cover and everything it's yeah it's 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 it's, it's more for your money yeah i'll tell you something i i judge the grammys and i judge making vinyl making vinyl this year i judged uh with judith as usual but uh, we found incredible packaging it's not just it's like from the 70s with the die cuts and the and the amazing uh and there's no rules to legalities some there's minimal type on it, and you can do a designer has the freedom, but it's unbelievable. So it's not just inexpensive packaging. A lot of this packaging is very expensive packaging that's out there and really incredible graphics. Yeah, well, that's because, um, well, I mean, it, it, that's the reason why a lot of people were he reticent to get into it because it is expensive. To make you know a vinyl record, I mean, with the yeah. pressing and everything, maybe that those prices will come down, and the artwork and to print the artwork and all that. But hey, hey, it's worth it, you know. It's totally, it's totally, totally worth it. I mean, I went through like you know, getting the test pressing of the CD and listening to that, and going, hey, that's okay, that's cool. And I mean, my last record, The Naked Flame, was on vinyl um, in Europe as okay. well. And oh, then wow. you get, and then you get like the vinyl copy, and you, you go, this is what I meant. This is what I heard, you know, when yeah, I was right. making it, you know. Yeah, people ask me, what is it about vinyl? I say, I just say this, the sound. It's also that, like, you know, it's interactive. It's like yeah. kind of having a friend. You got to get up and touch it and turn it over. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Which yeah, might I sound mean, you're like, right. you know. And, and that's right about touching things. I mean, it's like the packaging and opening I like it touching up. And things. Reading, uh, me too, reading the lyrics, uh, it's a bigger size, uh you know, you can, uh, it's back to the, what it should be and the turntables, yeah. you know, turntables, right? So yeah. it's like, a, it's like, so for me, I love it. I mean, my part of my music life, it's a very uh, fruitful thing. And I'm glad to see you're doing that yourself and see the vision. I always, I always am seeing that a lot of musicians now are really into it. And uh, besides doing CDs, they're doing vinyl, you know? 
Well, also, I mean, there's a market for it. It's not just musicians, but like I said, I mean, a lot of younger people are into yeah. vinyl. And uh, these days, for the most part, if you're selling things that you show, it's really hard to sell CDs, but he sells vinyl. It goes like crazy. You know, yeah, people, yeah. They, 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 they want that stuff, which means also, like you said, they have turntables. Yeah. You know? They have turntables, yeah. which is a good thing, you know? Yeah. And uh, what are your plans? Are you, are you planning on doing any touring now? Yeah, we're, we're, we're actually looking for a booking agent, yeah, to try to get us on tour because I want to get out and support the record. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I plan on doing I'm I'm also playing Chicago um, August 4th. Um, at a place called Fitzgerald's, and um, maybe August fifth in Champagne too. But yeah, mm -hmm. I'm doing that as well. So, but I want to get more gigs in between because um, yeah, I I I, I like touring. You know, I yeah. like vi I like vibrating myself to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have any? Uh, do you like to play the small clubs, or do you? Um, you know what I mean? Do you like? Because uh, that's more of a hands-on thing. People are closer to you uh, yeah, than the big arena anybody. thing. You know. Well, uh, there's a there's an in between. You know, <laughs> there's an in between. Yeah. I I I don't really like playing. I, I'll play clubs, but uh, clubs have gotten a lot of the venues have gotten in the habit of having no dressing room. You know, so no place oh. where you go to the bathroom or sorry to wipe your sweat off or anything or just oh gotta be, be on display all the time i like i love playing theaters like small theaters yeah you know like yeah, that i mean yeah. i think you know like th that's th that's that's what i really like i mean like i don't know 500 to a thousand seats i think yeah, that's perfect yeah. perfect size for music you know mm -hmm. and um um that's that that's the kind of places i like to play but you know i, I gotta you know we do some of those i mean we, we gotta work our way into doing it all the time you know yeah yeah i, I mean I, having said that though but there is there is something um there is the intimacy of like playing a, a hot sweaty club with the people like right up in your face and sometimes that can kind of um really be fun that can be good yeah city winery is a nice uh venue to play at uh, I like the size of it, you, and you feel closer to the musician, you know, yeah. there. and it's a yeah. nice amount of people, you know, and uh, you feel more to one to one, I think, there, you know what I mean? That I'm just naming one place. I mean, there's others, but uh, I cover that air, uh, venue a lot, but... Uh, Anyway. Well, you know, well, you know, Union Pool was great as well. I mean, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Kind of, it yeah. kind of looks like an old burlesque house or a whole burlesque theater or something. You know, it's wow, that kind yeah. of, it's not, and it doesn't hold that many people. Really, it holds like I guess I think it was 120. But mm. it's the way it's set up with this really high ceiling, and you just feel like um, you're I don't know, you're playing this uh, old uh, speakeasy back in the 20s or something. Yeah, my, my friend Sylvia Reed was there. She was taking pictures of you on stage. I know, I know. I got to call Sylvia. I know, I, I know. Because she came up and she had this film and of, of I, I don't know what it is. She had, she had rolls of film. I got to call her. Yeah, you should, you should. While, while, while you can still get it developed. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's great. Hey, so uh, do you want to add anything? Is there anything you want to tell the people out there? Um, well, uh, just, um, look for us to, you know, if we come to your town, I mean, we'd love to play to you. Um, I'm working on a, another record now. Um, okay. but, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to keep making music, um, as, as long as I hear it. I'm so glad we connected again. Hope to have you on again, Ivan. You're one of my special favorites and you're in my life, of course. So, uh, we should stick together and, uh, thanks for being on. And uh, to we go forward, I'll see you at City Winery. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yep. Take care. Take care. Yeah, you too. You too. I love you. I love you too, man.